the freshwater puffer has been here just as long as the cichlids, but has remained virtually unchanged. Shellfish are its passion. Its mouth has been transformed into a powerful beak, the better to crunch crabs with. But even with a bite taken out of it, this one fights back. Puffers were highly specialized even before Lake Tanganyika was created. They evolved in the rivers that fed into the new lake. That they've endured so long is testimony to the success of their design. But specialist designs are difficult to change, and they were unsuited to taking over the Virgin Lake. Unable to adapt to living in the lake itself, the puffer survives only as long as it stays in its River Delta home. A clawless otter prefers catching crabs to fish, but it finds the slow-moving puffer irresistible. But the puffer's apparent vulnerability is misleading. Inflating itself like a balloon makes it much too large to swallow and raises thousands of tiny prickles. No manner of acrobatics can persuade it to deflate. Inflating is another specialized trait, essential to the puffer's survival and to the otter's as well. Puffer fish have poisonous gallbladders, which could kill the otter should he eat it. Africa's early European explorers thought of this great lake as an endless sea. With the opposite shore out of sight, and with waves pounding its coastline, only the water's taste testifies to its true origin. The surf is fresh. Tanganyika's resemblance to the sea extends well beneath the surface. The first naturalists found shells here they believed had originated in the ocean, and they proposed that the lake had once been connected to it. Jellyfish, among others, certainly seem to have been spirited here from the sea. In fact, the lake has never been a part of the ocean, but over millions of years, Animals have come to resemble marine creatures because they evolved under similar conditions. The lake even has its own sardines. And when they come inshore to spawn, the feast is on. 